Time and death are on pause for the people stored in these liquid nitrogen tanks. This is Alcor's patient care bay. This is where we have all our patients stored, currently 199 humans, uh, plus almost 100 pets. Patients at the Alcor Life Extension Foundation are clinically dead and cryopreserved. The effort is a gamble by their families on a future in which loved ones can be revived and healed of diseases for which today there is no cure. We come at the stage where doctors today have given up, where today's medicine and technology is not sufficient to keep you going, but we're saying instead of just disposing of the patient, uh, give them to us, we're going to stabilize them, stop them getting worse, and hold them for as long as it takes for technology to catch up and allow them to come back to life and continue living. Among those in Alcor's facility, legendary baseball player Ted Williams, who died in 2002 at the age of 83 after suffering from heart disease. Another is Hal Finney, a computer scientist known for being the recipient of the first Bitcoin transaction. He died in 2014 at age 58 from complications of ALS. And future patients may include Paris Hilton, who has reportedly signed up for cryopreservation. As for the procedure, Moore says that after a person has been declared legally dead, he or she is moved into an ice bath where a mechanical CPR device is applied and medications are given to protect against cell damage. So we're going to stop the patient from returning to consciousness, number one. We're going to stop the blood from clotting. Uh, we're going to keep the blood pressure up. All these things we have to do to maintain viability much as you do when you're donating organs, just because the person's declared legally dead doesn't mean the body itself is dead. Uh, almost all of it is still alive. The bodies are not technically frozen, he says, but vitrified, becoming more like a glassy block that holds the cells in place, which happens around minus 110 degrees. There's no biochemical activity whatsoever, certainly no neurological activity. So at that point, really, you could, it doesn't matter whether you wait a day or 100 years, you're going to be just the same as when you started. I think this notion of freezing ourselves into the future is pretty science fiction and it's naive. The medical world has its cryogenic skeptics. The only group that you really see getting excited about the possibility are people who are sort of people who specialize in studying the distant future or people who have a stake wanting you to pay the money to do it. I don't really see any mainstream brain scientists, physiologists, people from psychiatry who study the mind. They're not lining up saying, I think this is a sound idea. Alcor says it does not make any promises or guarantees. It charges a minimum of $200,000 to cryopreserve an entire body, $80,000 to preserve the brain alone expensive to some, or perhaps a small price to pay for what Alcor has called an ambulance to the future. You know, by, by kind of a crude analogy, you have daytime and you have nighttime, uh, but you also have twilight in between because they kind of shade into one another. So in our view, uh, dying is a process and cryonics stops that process. It puts dying on a pause and lets you go into the future where we have greater capabilities to reverse that and bring you back to life. <laughs>